This is the story of two Swiss men who built a high-powered electric motorbike, the Zero Tracer, and set out to drive it around the world. <laughs> Frank Loeke and Tobias Wulzer from Designwerk in Winterthur hope to achieve this in 80 days, as in the Jules Verne story. They're competing against other zero-emission vehicles. Team Trev from Australia. And the Vectrix team from Germany. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Power Plaza team from South Korea had to drop out. Yeah. <laughs> Although the Zero Tracer has to charge up along the way, it's offsetting any CO2 emissions generated by the local power plants. Its main sponsor, Erlikan Solar, will generate more power from solar panels on its roof than the Zero Tracer team will use during the race. What's special about the Zero Tracer is the battery. It has a 21 kilowatt hour uh, storage capacity and with this electricity we can go up to 350 kilometers with one charge. The vehicle is already existing since 25 years. Actually it's based on this uh, vehicle Ecomobile and Tobias did the new design on the Monotracer from Peraves, the company. We have sport car performance, so actually we can compare to a Porsche or to a Ferrari. In fact, the Zero Tracer can do 0 to 100 km per hour in less than 4.5 seconds with a top speed of 250 km per hour. But the race isn't just about speed. So one test is of course speed, then acceleration, and was another test like uh, turning radius, braking, other tests with uh, little children on the schools. They could judge the vehicle, which, which is best in their eyes. So everyone has a chance to win, actually. <laughs> mm. oh, oh my God, why is it beautiful? Nice. In August 2010, the longest and greenest race of all time got underway, organized by Swiss inventor Louis Palmer. In Siberia, I can't leave those guys alone. I'm responsible for you guys. <laughs> he drove a solar taxi around the globe in 2008 and now drives the support van for the race. And so far, the Swiss have done very well, with Frank and Tobias taking turns at the wheel. Yeah, we were always the first arriving at the hotel. We didn't have any, any, any breakdown so far, so everything, the machine was just running like Swiss clock. Yeah. In Europe it was easy, it was just plugging in, because everything is set up, there are plugs which, which are strong enough. But in China, for example, the, the systems, they're just very basic. The most difficult challenge is probably road conditions and driving behavior from, from other people on the road. In China was special because the people they were really interested. If you drive on a highway in the middle lane, then someone is overtaking you on the left side, and then, wow, what's this? And then they, they grabbed their, their cameras out and took pictures, looked to us, and at the same time they're steering against us. And we, we just, we, we were afraid. It was amazing to sit in the vehicle and drive through all these different cities and see the reaction from the people. This car is the ever fastest uh, electric motorbike in the world. After each day of driving, the team showed off the vehicle at the scheduled stop of the day. But is their environmental message getting across? If you cross Russia or, or maybe Kazakhstan, people, they don't really care about it. They have, they have other problems, 
in China, they already know a little bit about solar things. For, for the other countries, it was just a very new concept. The teams are now driving from Vancouver to Mexico, where they'll visit the UN Climate Change Conference in Cancun before making their way back home. Frank says they've already earned a place in the record books. I think in the end we can look back and we can say we have been part of the history, changing, changing the automotive history somehow. And are they going to win? We have a very good chance for winning this race.